I'm Alex Ruhesky, and I am a senior in the psychology department here at UND. Uh, for my research for the last year, I've been studying neuropsychology as it relates to abnormal eating behaviors under Dr. Ferraro, with the help of a grad student, Rachel Kramer, and three of my own research assistants. Uh, I want to start with the literature background. So I became interested in the uh, neuropsychology of eating disorders when I took an abnormal psychology course and we talked about how eating disorders happen to be more under the social psychology realm versus a physiological psychology realm and I wanted to learn more about how it could possibly be physiologically related. Uh, so first I looked at I looked at research by Hampshire who studied anorexia patients for cognitive deficits and he found that if a patient has more than two cognitive deficits, their chances of recovery are very low, which shows that there are neurological reasons behind eating disorders. And on top of that, Cavendini studied decision-making processes in anorexia patients as well using the gambling task and found that anorexia patients have a tendency to have lower decision-making skills, which is also a red flag of neurological deficits. So that's kind of where I started figuring out what I wanted to do for my own study. Uh, the purpose was to evaluate the neuropsychological status of participants from the University of North Dakota pool and kind of assess that against their risk for developing an eating disorder. I've used about 75 participants so far. I plan to reach about 100 before the study is over. Uh, it should be over in about two weeks. We'll be done running participants. Um, the test that I've used, the biggest one is the r -bands test, which is the repeatable battery for assessment of neurological status. And then I've used multiple eating tests and a self-esteem test, which would help me evaluate whether the participants are at risk or not of developing an eating disorder. So my study is still in progress. Uh, participants will be run until April 28th, which is this Friday, and after which Dr. Farrow and I will compile the tests and start running them to look for interactions between the neuropsychological status and their eating disorder risk. Um, yeah, once the risk is established, um, we will run for interactions from the RBAN test to kind of evaluate where they stand, if there are cognitive deficits in these, per in these participants and how it relates to their risk of developing eating disorder. Um, future direct directions to take. Um, if there is an interaction between neurological deficits and risk of developing an eating disorder, this could be used as a new diagnostic tool, as well as it could be used to better understand how this risk is developed in an individual. I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Farrow for helping me with this study. Um, he is the neuropsychological professor on campus, so he helped a lot with helping me choose the ARBANS test, which was very helpful. And Dr. and Rachel Kramer, who is a grad student, who's also helped me run participants and figure out my study. Any questions? How long does it take to run all those tests? Uh, we take one individual at a time, and it takes about an hour. The, the three um, the two eating tests and the self-esteem test they do on their own in a survey kind of fashion. And then the r -bands test is a very interactive test that my research assistants have to use with them. Uh, it measures their uh, short-term memory, long-term memory, and cognitive functions. How do they get, do they get reimbursed with credit or anything? Yes, they get one credit uh, for participating because it does take an hour. Any other questions? Well, more than using this, this relation as a possible diagnostic tool, mm -hmm. do you think that there would be some avenues for maybe um, prevention and better awareness as well? Yes, I have thought about that too. Um, it would kind of bring in this new pool of people that you could test for 
risk if you did know their neurological, like if you did know this, it would basically become a new risk factor that people could evaluate. 